high velocity systems. Installation video. Locating and installing vent outlets. Properly locating the vents is important with the high velocity system. Refer to the design layout for the proper locations. The high velocity system is a pressurized system which converts pressure to velocity at the vent outlet creating a Venturi effect. The Venturi effect allows for complete mixing of the room air, eliminating hot and cold spots. With the flexibility of the high velocity system, you can install vents in floors, ceilings and walls. Vents should be installed in low traffic areas of the home, away from curtains and other obstructions. Next to windows, behind doors and in room corners are the preferred locations. In heavy traffic areas such as bathrooms and kitchens, vents can be installed in the kick plate under the counters. For homeowner comfort, avoid locating them directly under kitchen sinks and bathroom mirrors. Vents should be located six inches on center, away from adjacent floors, walls or ceilings. Here we're showing a floor vent installation. Ensure there are no obstructions below. Use a three inch hole saw to cut the opening. To prevent debris from entering the system during construction, place the rough-in cap over the rough-in boot. Then place the rough-in boot to line up with the hole. Secure the flange of the rough-in boot to the underside of the floor. In wall and ceiling applications, it may be necessary to frame out when rough-in boots are located between joists, studs, or roof trusses. The high-velocity system is easy to install in retrofit situations. Energy Saving Products has a complete installation guide on how to install the rough-in boot in existing construction. Contact your supplier for complete details. If it is necessary to eliminate a vent or change its location by more than 10 feet, contact the system designer for instructions. Installing the Main Supply Plenum Two types of duct are recommended for use with the high-velocity system. Spiral duct or snap lock duct. The main plenum should be located according to the design layout. Before beginning work, inspect the location of the duct to ensure there are no obstacles. It is essential that the main supply plenum extend a minimum of 18 inches from the fan coil before any elbows or tees are installed. For details on airflow requirements for branch or bullhead tee connections, refer to the installation guide. When it is necessary to reduce the size of the main plenum, care must be taken in selecting the right number of branch outlets relative to duct size. The installation guide provides complete plenum sizing and selection tables. Typically, the main supply plenum is assembled on the floor before being suspended in place. Insert the elbow, T or end cap into the main supply plenum and ensure a tight fit. Secure the connection using four sheet metal screws. Seal all joints to ensure an airtight connection. The next step is to locate and drill the holes required for the branch takeoff outlets. Refer to the installation plan for outlet locations. Drill holes using a two and a quarter inch hole saw. Place the branch takeoff over the hole by aligning the curve shape of the branch takeoff with the curve of the plenum. Ensure that the opening in the branch takeoff lines up with the plenum hole. Push the branch takeoff tightly against the plenum and secure with four three-quarter inch self-tapping screws. Install all the branch takeoffs in this manner. In a suspended system, hang the plenum under the floor joist using sheet metal strapping. The plenum can also be concealed in the joist space depending on how the floor is constructed. In an attic, lay duct over the bottom cord of the roof trusses. If the main plenum runs through unconditioned space, such as an attic, or unheated crawl space, or is to be used in cooling applications, it must be insulated. With the high heat loss or gain from attics, it's also recommended to cover the plenum with the attic insulation, in addition to the insulating sleeve. To install the insulation sleeve, Use a temporary cone reducer to make it easier to slide on the plenum. If an end cap is used, pull the insulation across the end and securely tape it to prevent heat loss. The insulation sleeve must be installed before the branch takeoffs are installed. To install the branch takeoffs with an insulation sleeve, 
cut through the insulation sleeve in an X fashion and install the branch takeoff outlet using sheet metal screws. Pull the insulation around the branch takeoff and seal using foil duct tape. If the duct is to be suspended, drill the holes so that the branch takeoffs will be pointing upwards at about 30 degrees to the horizontal. If located in an attic, branch takeoffs should be pointed slightly downwards at the same angle. For more information on installing the main supply plenum, refer to the installation guide. Installing the flexible air supply ducts. With all of the vent outlets in place and the branch takeoffs attached to the main supply plenum, the flexible ducts can be quickly installed. The flexible ducts are supplied fully assembled in 10 and 15 foot lengths. The branch takeoffs from the main plenum should have been installed to take advantage of the standard duct lengths. However, 25 foot lengths of unassembled duct are available to allow for extending runs beyond 15 feet. If flexible ducts are to be extended, refer to the installation guide for adjustment factors. When extending the 2 inch flexible duct, attach a branch coupling into the inner core of unassembled flexible duct. Secure using foil duct tape. Connect the two branch couplings with a connector tube and pull the insulation and vapor barrier over the coupling and secure with a cable tie. When a run is shorter than 10 feet, the full 10 feet of flexible duct must still be used. Coil back the flexible duct, keeping the bend radius at not less than 6 inches. The flexible duct can be attached to joists or trusses using strapping or with a staple gun through the insulated sleeve. If the vapor barrier is accidentally damaged, it can be repaired using foil duct tape. At the rough end boot, slide the flexible duct connector over the boot coupler, ensure a tight fit, and fasten with a screw. Connect the flexible duct the same way at the main plenum. When the duct is in an unconditioned space and the main plenum is insulated, some extra attention is required at the rough end boot and branch takeoffs. At the rough end boot, pull the insulation up and around the collar and use a cable tie to secure the insulation. At the main plenum, push the flexible duct insulation as close to the plenum as possible. Then seal the two with foil duct tape. Installing the fan coil. The high velocity fan coil is designed to be installed either vertically, horizontally, or counter flow. In the horizontal position, the unit can be suspended from ceiling joists to free up valuable floor space, or placed in an out-of-the-way place such as an attic or closet. Attic installations are popular in retrofit applications, while for new construction, the unit is typically located in the basement or mechanical room. Sufficient clearances on the access side of the fan coil must be met to ensure easy accessibility to all components. Refer to the installation guide for clearances on the model being installed. For easier maneuvering, remove the front access panel. Because the unit is designed for various installation positions, it's necessary to cut a hole in the unit before attaching the return air. Locate the top of the unit and then use the provided return air template to mark the return air opening. Cut the hole, being careful to cut completely through the sound absorbing lining. Depending on the configuration of the unit, apply double-sided isolation tape to the return air base, filter rack, or cooling coil to create an airtight seal. With the main plenum completely installed, it can be connected to the fan coil unit. Use sheet metal screws to fasten the plenum to the fan coil outlet and seal with foil duct tape or an approved sealant. When the unit is to be suspended, use the available high velocity hanging kit. Included in the kit are four mounting brackets and four neo nylon straps. Attach the mounting brackets to the fan coil assembly. Cut the neo nylon straps to the required length and attach to overhead joists. Suspend the unit using the supplied nuts, washers, and screws. When a unit is to be installed on a main floor or in an attic, a secondary drain pan must be used for cooling applications. Since the design of the high velocity system involves lower supply air temperatures, you may want to insulate the air handler itself to prevent any unwanted moisture buildup. Installing the heating coil. 
Two types of heating coils are standard with the high velocity system, a hot water coil or an electric coil. If an H model high velocity system was ordered, the hot water coil will have been factory installed. With the BU model, the hot water coil will need to be field installed. Electric coils are always separate and must be field installed. To install the heating coil, first remove the coil access panel. The hot water coil slides into the fan coil opening and is covered with the access panel. The electric coil slides in the same as a hot water coil but is a self-contained unit and does not require the access panel as a cover. Make sure there's sufficient clearance in front of the unit for easy access to the coil. Refer to the installation guide for clearances on the model being installed. Installing the cooling coil. When installing high velocity systems cooling modules, they must always be installed in the vertical position. This will allow the positive flow drain pan located inside the cooling module to properly drain condensate. The refrigerant cooling module, RCM, comes complete with R22 thermal expansion valve, sight glass, two access ports, and an external freeze stat to be installed at the fan coil. With the refrigerant pre-pipe modules, RPM, the expansion valve, sight glass, access ports, and freeze stat are factory installed. All energy saving products refrigerant modules are heat pump ready and can be ordered with the R410A expansion valves. To connect the cooling modules to the high velocity system, use the supplied L brackets. The L brackets are first installed on the fan coil or return air base depending on the type of configuration selected. Before attaching the cooling module, the supplied isolation tape needs to be applied to the frame edges. When the fan coil is installed on the floor in the vertical position, allow enough room under the cooling module for drain connections. To ensure positive condensate drainage, a small plinth may be needed to raise up the cooling coil and allow for drain connections. Once the cooling module is secured in place with sheet metal screws, use an approved sealant on the outer seals. This will create an airtight seal for better system performance. The cooling modules come with a primary and secondary drain outlet. If the primary outlet becomes plugged, water is diverted to the secondary outlet. The primary condensate drain must have a vented P-trap installed at a slope of one quarter inch per foot in the direction of the drain. As with any installation, piping should be done according to local codes. Installing filtration systems. We recommend a high quality filter to be installed in the return air system for indoor air quality. The high velocity return air base is designed to match up to the selected fan coil and has a built-in filter rack. Also available is a standalone filter rack designed to fit the high velocity systems fan coils and cooling modules. When using the fan coil for heating only, the return air base with the built-in filter rack is the ideal solution. When a cooling module is used, a filter needs to be on the return side of the module. This will stop debris from gathering in the coil and degrading the cooling performance. Both the return air base and filter rack makes changing of filters an easy affair. The high velocity system is ideally suited to the addition of third party filtration equipment to improve indoor air quality. The return system. The complete return air system is not supplied by the factory and should be installed according to building codes for your area. Rigid or flexible duct is acceptable with the high velocity system. Refer to the installation guide for return air sizing. If rigid duct is used, to ensure quiet operation, we recommend the first five feet from the fan coil be acoustically lined. The high velocity return air base comes from the factory with sound absorbing material pre-installed. With a rigid return air duct, Use an approved sealant on all the joining connections to create an airtight seal. When a round flexible return air duct is used, a tapering transition will need to be installed. Secure the inner core of the duct with an approved sealant. Then use a cable tie on the outer insulation sleeve. Remember to upsize the return air one size when using flexible duct for the return. Also see the installation guide for tips on installing a fresh air makeup system. Connecting heating and cooling sources. The flexibility built into the high velocity system means that heating and cooling installations will be designed to suit a particular project. 
when installing the water modules, whether it be heating or cooling, only two connections are needed at the coil. All piping shall be run in accordance with local code laws. For further details on typical piping installations for the water modules, refer to the High Velocity Installation Guide for sample piping layouts. The refrigerant cooling modules are connected to a condenser or heat pump. The pre-piped module will require only two connections at the coil, while the refrigerant cooling module will need the coil assembly field installed. The electric coils require 240 volt single phase connections and the amperage can range from 30 to 60 amps depending on the model being used. With all the power sources disconnected to the electric coil, remove the access panel. The wiring diagram is on the inside of the electric coil access panel or refer to the installation guide. All wires shall be run and sized in accordance with local electrical code laws. Wiring installations. The high velocity fan coil comes pre-wired with a printed circuit board for both heating and cooling with no additional relays required. Terminals for a heating zone valve, heating zone circulator, anti-ice control and condensing unit are supplied to simplify the field control wiring. Auxiliary relays are included for 110 volts, 24 volts or dry contact applications. When the unit is in heat mode, the auxiliary relay is engaged. To control the constant air delivery, the fan can be set to suit the customer's preferences. Depending on the style of unit, a heating fan speed control may also be included. When the unit is in cooling mode, rheostats will be bypassed and 24 volt power is supplied to the condensing unit terminals. The unit fan will run at high speed when cooling mode is called. Complete wiring diagrams for various components and systems are included in the installation guide. Finishing the installation. After all the high velocity ductwork is completed and contaminants such as drywall dust, sawdust and other construction debris are no longer a concern of entering the system, the vent plates can be installed. Cut out the rough end cap and install the vent plate by sliding it into the end of the damper tube. Use the damper key to ensure the vent operates correctly. Leave the vent in the fully open position. Turning the damper key counterclockwise will set the vent in the open position. For thicker than usual floors such as hardwood, a vent plate extension kit may be needed and is available from the supplier. For any additional questions, contact your local supplier or a high velocity systems representative visit our website www.highvelocity.com for more information on the high velocity system